The world is intrigued by fossils. Of course, many think that that evidence belongs to the evolutionist. This is their evidence. Many Christians are somewhat intimidated by the evidence from the fossil record. That ought not to be the case. I think when you look at this lecture and we consider the evidence from the fossil record, you'll see strong confirmation of the creation model, that the evidence fits much better within that model than the evolution model. But how will we establish the nature of the evidence? If, of course, I've received training in this area, but if I say this, some would think, well, you're prejudiced in your analysis of the fossil record. And so we'll allow the evolutionist himself to describe the nature of that record. This is using the technique of the antagonistic witness. If you're in court and a friend testifies on your behalf, that'll help, but not nearly as much as when you get the enemy to acknowledge your point. That's worth 10 times as much judicially. And so we'll be looking at the evidence as described by the evolutionists themselves. Let's begin with a statement by S.M. Stanley of Johns Hopkins University, emphasizing the significance of this evidence. He says it's doubtful whether in the absence of fossils, the idea of evolution would represent anything more than an outrageous hypothesis. I hope you will remember that statement. Without the fossils, if you don't have fossils testifying to evolution, then it's just uh, evolution is just an outrageous hypothesis. The fossil record, he says, and only the fossil record provides direct evidence of major sequential changes in the Earth's biota. If you have evidence for evolution, this is where it's at, if you please. However, we're looking at historical evidence. Notice the implications of that as emphasized by John uh, Horner, actually usually referred to as Jack, uh, a very famous uh, dinosaur digger-upper, uh, paleontologist. If you saw Jurassic Park, uh, this uh, film was based on his, uh, or the character in the film was based on him. He was the one, actual paleontologist digging up dinosaurs up in Montana. But he wrote the book Dinosaur Lives and said paleontology is a historical science, a science based on circumstantial evidence after the fact. And so he says we can never reach hard and fast conclusions. That's the way history works. That's what paleontology is. He continues, these days it's easy to go through school for a good many years and sometimes even through college without ever hearing that some sciences are historical or by nature inconclusive. Uh, yes, a great many people will say, no, the fossil record proves this. Well, the fossil record by its very nature is historical and does not do that. It gives indications, but we want to see what the indications are from this historical science of paleontology. And we ought to be able to look at the fossil record and tell whether the evidence supports the creation or the evolution model because the predictions of both are absolutely different. If we think about it for a moment, we would see that the beginning of the fossil record, which uh, would show the greatest contrast, uh, would predict that with the evolutionist there would be gradual, simple beginnings that are linked progressively upward, whereas the creationist would predict a complex and abrupt and diverse beginning right from the start, now, of course, we believe we're looking at a flood deposit, and so we wouldn't find all animals that lived on the ground there at the bottom of the ocean. They'd be mostly ocean-dwelling organisms, but they would not be simple. They would be complex, and there would be many kinds right to start with. We should be able to tell a very obvious difference in this critical area, the beginning of the fossil record. And as we continue studying the fossil record, we see that the evolutionist would predict 
similarities that would be branching, that is connected. You would see allied continuum. Uh, you would see progression. This is what would characterize the fossil record, whereas the creationist says, no, there would be similarities. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that a creator would create similar forms for similar functions, but they would not be in this branching pattern, but more of a mosaic pattern, like where the artist would use a blue tile here and a blue tile there, wherever he needed it, not necessarily connected. There would be separate and distinct and uh, stasis, that is, staying the same, is the principle that would characterize the fossil record. Again, beginning and continuing, there's a contrast. We ought to be able to look at the record and see which is served best by the facts of the fossil record. National Geographic had this introduction to the Cambrian period a few moments ago, uh, a few months ago, uh, describing an explosion of life. The Cambrian is the lowest part of that geologic column. This is where you first find complex life. Before it, you have some blue-green algae and some bacteria that I think lived in the ground uh, before the flood deposit began. But when it really begins, it just explodes on the scene. In the blind watchmaker, maker, Richard Dawkins, describes the condition of the beginning of the fossil record. We find many of them already in an advanced state of evolution. Now, it is evolution that he's seeing here. This is the way he sees it. But the very first time they appear, they're advanced. It is as though they were just planted there without any evolutionary history. Now, he has great faith that there was an evolutionary history, but it's not there in evidence. He believes uh, this is a, a state of evolution, <laughs> but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at a sudden appearance, as if they were just planted. Needless to say, he goes on to point out, this appearance of sudden planting has delighted the creationist. I'll plead guilty to that. Uh, yes, <laughs> it's delightful. Not necessarily that uh, we're trying to force the evidence, but... Uh, this is encouraging if you take this position. And uh, I think we need to just follow the facts wherever they lead. But uh, one who believes this is the best explanation from the evidence is certainly delighted as he sees this kind of uh, support. An example of the kind of thing he's talking about, the complex fossils from the beginning can be seen in the trilobites, which are perhaps the most common fossil in the lowest part of the Cambrian. These are the little roly-poly critters, that type critters that lived at the bottom of the ocean, but they were very complex creatures, though bottom-dwelling creatures. Science News reported just a few years ago regarding their eyes that they may have been superior to current living animals. They had, in principle, perfect vision, we're told. They possessed the most sophisticated eye lenses ever produced by nature. And some of them are so well preserved that you can still take photographs through the lenses of these very sophisticated eyes. They continue saying they look like they were designed by a physicist. Well, I think they were designed, that's what it looks like, but that's certainly not the kind of beginning of the fossil record that would be predicted by the evolutionist. The slow, gradual progression is what's predicted, the simple beginning, but no, that's not what we see. Ocean bottom dwelling creatures that were very complex and as we'll see, very diverse. In fact, Stephen Gould of Harvard says the Cambrian explosion occurred in a geological moment and we have reason to think all major anatomical designs made their evolutionary appearance at that time. Now, it was evolutionary, but you've got all of the major phyla, he says, there at the beginning. In fact, we have more there than we have now. We've lost some of them, but all of the ones we have now we had right at the beginning. Now, this is not the way it's supposed to work for the evolutionist. All of the major, and he uses that word designs, which, of course, he doesn't believe, but that's what it looks like, and so we catch him using it from time to time. He continues saying not only the phylum chordata itself, and, of course, that's our phylum, the animals with backbones, not only the most sophisticated, we like to think, animals with back, but all its major divisions, not just seeing that highest order, but all the major divisions of that highest order right at 
the Cambrian explosion right at the beginning. 